Hey guys, Ray from Lovey RV. So, pretty well wrapped up with putting the cover on and the winterization. So, I thought I'd give you a quick look, kind of an overview. I don't have my main video camera today, so I'm just going to use my phone. I decided uh, not really to shoot videos because this is my first time doing it, so I didn't want to be all distracted. But I'll just give you kind of an overview of what I had to do to get things all sorted out for leaving it for the winter. So let's just go inside here. Now the plumbing is much like an RV. So uh, I drained the tanks. We have a 150 gallons of tanks. I drained it and ran it through the water pump. Toilets in here. I sorted them out. They're a little different. They don't really have any tanks or anything. They go straight outside. So I actually pulled the plumbing parts out of that and I'm going to uh, rebuild it next year anyway. The other toilet in the forward head was the electric one with the macerator. So I ran a bunch of that pink stuff through. So let me pull the floor out, out and I'll show you what I had to do with the engine and stuff. Yeah, so I disconnected the raw water pipe down there. There's a seacock and I filled a bucket up and uh, ran fresh water into it. And I ran the engine and flushed it out with uh, fresh water, got as much of the salt out as I could. And then I switched uh, antifreeze into the same bucket and ran it through the engine until it came out the back. I actually have a video of me doing that if you're interested. Well, that took care of the engine other than I changed the oils and uh, we filled up our fuel tippity top closed the valves on that and uh, the coolant system had pretty good uh, clean coolant in it so I just left that as it is I didn't flush it out um, disconnected the um, this this tank here's our holding tank you can see there's pink in that hose because that's uh, coming through our electric toilet has a macerator. So I disconnected the hose that feeds it and then pumped that pink stuff through and a bunch of it got into our holding tank there, which was empty at the time. So it has a little bit of a the RV boating antifreeze in the, or coolant yeah, antifreeze. It's a non-toxic stuff that they use. And then I took out the, ma the macerator that sent the chews up and pump stuff overboard and uh, put it in a plastic bag i'm going to clean it next year and then i just stuffed all the hoses with with rags and stuff and closed all the seacocks so bugs and stuff can't get in as far as the bilge pumps i'm just brought them up above the water level um i've left there's a, actually a low point drain down in here so if, if we get water in, it'll get only to a certain point, then drain out the bottom. And then I've also left the, the engine seacock open. So I won't leave the bilge pumps because I, I wanted to turn off our, our 12 volt power completely. So disconnected the batteries, both the starting and the, the lead acid ones. I had fully um, put water in them and, and charged them up fully. And I'm not going to bother trickle charging them. We'll just 
see how they are at the, the start of next season. They'll probably be fine. It doesn't get that cold around here. And we're going to leave two of these uh, kind of little low wattage heaters that are just to, to kind of keep moisture away. This one's called air dryer mildew fighter. So it uh, puts out about 130 watts and I have two of them and I'll just leave my inverter running so the transfer switch is working for those two and I'm also going to leave a, a light down here in the engine bay so probably equal to about 260 watts total of uh, heat that'll be going on in here just enough to fight any moisture that might happen we've taken out all of our uh, stuff that's fabric you can see all the cushions are gone and everything like that Oh, missed one curtain. I'm going to grab that curtain. So we'll give you a look inside the cover here. This came with the boat. It's a nice, I think it's kind of like a polyester tarping material. It's from a company that makes custom boat covers in uh, Vancouver Island and Ladysmith. Although this one wasn't actually meant for this boat, so it doesn't fit it exactly. But it all zips in place. It's pretty cool actually. So I've worked hard to try to get it so that it's fairly tight. I don't want any loose spots that would end up getting snow and pooling or water or anything. And to bring the radar down a bit. It's a lot of work actually to get it all in place. Comes with the two by fours and the bimini kind of hold the, the peak area up. And I just put some ropes for extra measure. Just in case the wind really blows around here. And you can see at the front, there's also a pole that holds up the front. Everything zips together, zips together in three pieces. So that was kind of nice to get that with the boat. Saved us having to, to get one made. Hopefully she'll survive the winter. We have some people in the storage yard that we have it in that can help out and monitor it in the storage yard. We'll check on it too if we ask. So hopefully she's going to be okay. This will be our first winter leaving it. And uh, lucky our uh, storage uh, space in the boatyard came with a nice shed. So we could put all our stuff in, all the cushions and that. <clears throat> and then we got another one of these little... Uh, dryers to keep everything nice and dry in here and the wire power wire put it up to the mast and ran it down along here and then down and put a bit of a cover on it just to keep the rain off it rather than just leaving it exposed hopefully that'll work out like i say we have some neighbors that uh live here full time can keep an eye on things well there you go just a quick overview of the winterization next year when i come back i'll do more detailed uh, video on uh, dewinterizing it and next season i'll do uh, a video on all the different steps i had to do anyway hope that's going to be good i guess next uh, in the spring you'll get to see what exactly happened and how good this cover was from now on, though, until at least uh, mid-May 2024, you're going to get RVing videos again. A lot of people like that. Until next time, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. Cheers, everyone.